<laughs> You're listening to the Barn Church Podcast. Well, hey, listen up, everybody. This is Jared, and I wanted to let you know that me and three of our ministry leaders in the barn went to North Carolina, and we went to the Alter Global Conference, Voices in the Wilderness. Now, the podcast you're about to hear is a special podcast. We wanted to bring some takeaways and just discuss a lot of the wonderful nuggets of wisdom that we were able to glean from this special time of ministry. Guys, you're not going to want to miss this podcast because it's definitely going to challenge you and hopefully convict you to live a life for Jesus. Stay tuned because the TBC Sermon Podcast starts right now. Well, what a beautiful Saturday evening it is here in North Carolina. I'm sitting at the table with Pastor Michael Swan. Hey, hey. Pastor Jamie Detweiler. And Pastor Kara McLean and Pastor Jared. Actually, we all, all operate in uh, the fivefold giftings in various different capacities. Um, Obviously, we have a prophet, an evangelist, an apostle, and a teacher around the table right now. But that's not what we wanted to talk to you guys about. We wanted to really just, I think more or less just chronicle um, for everyone out there on the podcast what this weekend has done for all of us. And I apologize ahead of time for the quality of the audio. I'm running with bare minimum and doing the best I can with what I have. But uh, we wanted to chronicle everything that kind of happened this weekend. I don't know how long we'll go. Um, But when it's done, I think we'll all kind of know. So um, takeaways from this weekend. If you don't, uh, if you did not know previous what this weekend was, there was a free conference in North Carolina at the Ark Fellowship for the Altar Global. And that is Jeremiah Johnson's uh, ministry. And it was, in my opinion, has been a fantastic weekend of confirmation, um, of stirring, as well as just some challenge for us as well. And that's really what the weekend was designed around, right? I agree. Yeah. And so um, I guess we're just going to kind of start it off, uh, you know, topics, takeaways. I mean, there is no agenda on this, y'all. So we're just going to, just going to chat. We're going to roll with it. We're going to roll with it. (laughs) I love rolling with it. You know, the title was the first thing that impressed me because it certainly didn't come out the way that it sounded Jared, when I heard, you know, uh, Voices in the Wilderness, I'm familiar with that scripture. I'm familiar with the chapters and verses. I'm familiar with backstories from that. Mm -hmm. We've probably all heard messages to that end. But what actually came out of that, what the Holy Spirit produced, was a completely new perspective of understanding my father. That the times that I've spent, you know, there was a moment in my life where I lost my mother, my father, my granddaughter and my grandmother all in about a year span. Mm. And for me, that was a wilderness experience Mm -hmm. for sure. And there was a part of me that was so angry. I didn't have the perspective that I have now going into that place that my father loves me so much. He never abandoned me. He never left me there. He was using those experiences to develop a purpose in me, a power in me, things I never saw before. Mm. And two of these, uh, two of the speakers at this conference um, that we'll, we'll probably list in just a moment uh, were, they actually identified those kind of um, life loss experiences that people have and how they can change you. And I, and I guess my takeaway was how it changed me for the better. And not for the worst. It increased my capacity for somebody else that's in pain, you know. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So that was that was something right out the gate from the title itself mm-hmm. um, that really spoke to me. Yeah, and you didn't even get that from the inception. Like you sit down, some voices in the wilderness conference, you know, all these people sitting there in the <laughs> at the stadium seating and it's just absolutely yeah. insane and then they start getting into it right out of the gate mm-hmm. and the first speaker on thursday evening was jeremiah johnson 
and he came um he came about in a thousand and um one of the things that i know he talked about and i i took some notes for that night um he gave five points but in my opinion that's not even the best of what was there um, one of them he said is you have to heal so you can hear yeah, yeah. um the spirit of accusation comes to harm, not heal. And God is more interested in changing you, not using you. That point right there was more interesting to me than anything else mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. really the Lord is just looking to sanctify his bride. Yep. Using is not part of the deal. Sanctification is. Yep. He can use you, but that's not part of the deal sanctification as the worship of his son, the belief yeah. of his son. Yep. And I posted a, a scripture and I F five thread this morning that, um, oh man, was it, was it F five or was it our other private thread? I think it was our private thread that we had. Um, yeah, it was John six, 28 through 29. And I've read this a hundred different times, but this weekend it kind of hit a different, um, chord with me. It's John 6, 28, 29. I'm doing out of NLT. They replied, we want to perform God's works too. What should we do? Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. Yeah. Yeah. It's so simple. People complicate it. <laughs> they complicate it. Wow. Yeah. But our society is driven to perform yeah. and to get a, an award or a trophy or a ribbon or something when really ultimately we don't have to perform for him. We just have to love him yeah. and believe in what he did. It's uh, super simple. Yeah. And it's it's like when when you're out there, you're getting a reward for being a victim. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if you're... Oh, they hurt me. Oh, well, I love you. Oh, they said this. Oh, well, I'm going to love you. You know, they, they're in the accusation room. So what, one thing that Jeremiah said was Satan runs a 24-hour accusation room, and Jesus runs a 24-hour prayer room. <laughs> Which room are you going to go into? Amen. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that was good. We got to go into that prayer room and get out of that accusation room, take those accusations to the prayer room, and be like, Correct. Lord, this is, what do I do with this? Like, let him that's what he's. That's what he wants. Yeah, from the get go. And it's not just people accusing yeah. us, but it's us being accusatory, yes. right? Right. Take yeah. that to the Lord. Yeah. Take that to the prayer room. <laughs> right. Because it's easy to get in the flesh. It's easy to get irritated. It's easy to get offended. It's not easy to crucify your flesh and to keep an unoffendable heart that you can just love people no matter what. But I love what he said. He Jeremiah said, "Salvation is free." But maturity is expensive. Yeah. 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 And that is where the church is right yeah. now. Salvation is yeah. free. Maturity is expensive. Yeah, you want to be used by God, but you don't want to be held accountable. Yeah. You don't want to take responsibility for your actions. You don't want to, you know, share truth with people. You then, don't want to go you, through any pain. You don't want to go through pain. any pain. You don't want to go through the wilderness. Well, these people are I don't saying. Want to do that. Don't wait for God to put you in the wilderness. Go into the wilderness yourself so that you right. can get what you need to get out of there to grow the way you need to grow, to heal the way you need to heal so you can yeah. hear what the Lord has for you next. Yeah. Mm. Prayer was like the hottest topic. The it entire sure was. Yeah. 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 So if there's any doubt in anyone's mind that prayer is the necessity for the believer, I don't know what they've been taught. They've been lying to themselves. They just right. want to pray for five minutes and thank the Lord for their meal. But no, we're talking about spending time with the Father, going to Him, just soaking in his presence, you know, finding out how he feels about you, what he thinks about you, what what are some things in your heart that he needs to get out of there. That is prayer. That is contending for yourself. We can contend for other people. Are you contending for yourself? Yeah. Man, I'm it's taken me a minute to process everything. It's just it was a one-two hook right in the kisser every single time you turned around. There was something being thrown at you, and you're like, "Holy crap! I can't write that down because I'm still trying to process the one, the last thirty things right. you just said." <laughs> yeah, and it's not that I got know, a lot of notes. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen Kara's fingers fly so fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the The real thing about it is, though, that 
when after after every session we chatted a little bit and we really all felt that not only are we on track 100 percent um these things and i guess the different slant that was brought helped qualify some deeper things in our spirits of where we actually need to take what god has entrusted us with to the next level correct i would agree and uh, I, and not to think of the wilderness mm. as discipline it's building character right? it's yeah. character development we're developing who god wants us to be by going through these trials and we have to count it as joy yeah. in the wilderness and that's where that's where god can really shine that's where he gets his glory when we still give him glory even when we're being tried yeah and it's not the devil right it's the lord it's the lord <laughs> I would Not say this, you know, if we're going to irritate with certain people, that's the Lord showing us something in our heart. Right. Every time. Every time. Especially as a leader. Uh, absolutely. I, yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, this. I know I got what I was supposed to get out of this conference. It was a ton of confirmation. Not that I necessarily needed more confirmation. Um but it was good, especially the 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 heart of prayer, the 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 topic of prayer, because I have felt, as you guys know, because I've been pushing it for weeks, is we need to have more attendance in our prayer meetings. We need to take prayer more seriously. We need to be pushing people to go after the Father. And I think that's one of the reasons the church, capital C, hasn't had power, because people are not taking prayer seriously. Right. And it's time. So we're going to be up in our game, for lack of a better term. Yeah. 100% time for um, the prayer initiatives, the services, um, elements of service, um, all of it uh, from Sunday to Saturday, all, all throughout the week. Um, we are really feeling the pull from Holy Spirit to push prayer to the next level because i know you've heard kara say this prayer does precede revival that's the seeds of revival correct but prayer doesn't stop once revival nope. comes prayer has to increase because not only is prayer the seed prayers the rain correct yes. the increase happens from holy spirit and it's all based on the effort of how long we're willing to sit there and contend for the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yep. And well, we can't contend for the kingdom of God if we have stuff inside our hearts that's junk. No. That's 100% true. You know, you can say you want the new wineskin all day long, but if you're holding on to the old, you don't want the new. Yeah. And this is not a time to be lukewarm. No. Nope. Another thing that I was they brought up i don't remember who it was that spoke it but um not just bringing our burdens to the lord but finding out what it is that is burden what burdens his heart the things that we yeah. can be praying yes. for yeah, that was yeah. amazing yeah you know what yes. the things that burden the lord's heart the region the lost israel mm -hmm. those are the things that burden his heart we're not just praying lord <laughs> Lord, can we win this baseball game? You know, can right. you can you can you give me enough money that I can go get that new pair of shoes? We're asking God, how many more souls can I save this week? How many how many more loss can I show them the way this week? Not just the things of this world. We sing those songs all the time, and I think this is like the biggest part about worship that can bug the crap out of me, though. Is we sing songs that say, break my heart for what breaks yours, mm -hmm. everything you have for the kingdom's cause. Yet we are not willing to do what is necessary to see that come to bear. Right. For the yep. fruit to actually come through. And at this point where it's not even worship songs that we're singing, it's just great little lyrics because they're not making a connection. We're not right. actually praying these things. And I would say the majority of the worship songs that have anything about what you just talked about jamie yeah we're not making the connection in our hearts from what our mouths are confessing we are blindly foolishly proclaiming these things to see 
them done in faith, but faith without the works is dead. And this has to be the end of it in the church. The church has got to wake up. The church has got to stop sleeping. The church has got to rise to the occasion of what Christ has called her to be. It can't sleep and sit on the bleachers and think that everybody else is going to stand on that field or on that stadium floor and do the work for them when we're all called to be in the game. Right. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? Everybody thinks somebody else will do it and they don't have to. So they're not willing to pay the cost. And even that problem was spoken to, and I don't remember who it was. There were so many amazing speakers, Sarah Coker, Corey Russell, Jeremiah Johnson, but they said, okay, so if we're not pointing out, just sitting and pointing out the problems, what are you doing about the problems? Right. Correct. You know, which is why our movement's actually starting another church, you know, church planting. What yep. are you doing about the problem? Right. Yeah, the solution. Are we the solution or just Mm -hmm. spending our time pointing out the problem? Yeah, right. Because the leader talks about the solution. A complainer talks about the problems. Apathetic people talk about the problems. Without any solutions being presented. And then they wonder why there's no power in their life or why things are going hard in their life and they want to look at you to blame them. Yeah. It's pretty insane. Maturity is expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Oil is expensive. Yeah. Yeah. We saw speakers this weekend that had to go through something to get the authority and Mm -hmm. the power that they had. Right. And we have people today that, and this is one of the things that they barked at almost all weekend long. I don't mean bark in a bad way, but this was just iterated again and again and again and again. Don't grab a mic just because you have a call. Right. That's not how you get notoriety. If you, you don't want that, if that's the case, the people that are up there that have actually spoken out of their heart have contended for that. Yep. And this is their platform because it's God's platform. They've right. been building something because God has been building something. They're not just sitting by idly accepting whatever and however and whenever. They're doing something for the kingdom of God. Right. Corey Russell said a few weeks ago in a different message I listened to, he said, people are going to want to borrow your oil because mm-hmm. they don't want to pay for theirs. Hmm. Yep. How much does it cost? Right. Can't get the, power and authority. And the problem is your oil something. and the reserves of your, your oil cannot be used on somebody else because your oil is for you, not for them. Right. right. That's so true. I like what uh, I think Jeremiah said was, Jesus didn't pick up the cross so that you don't have to. Right. He picked up the cross to <laughs> show you how to Come pick on. up yours. Mm-hmm. Come on. We, there's some work to you see the glitz the glamour of it you know oh they're up there look at how well they can speak <laughs> look at all right. but you don't know how many hours that it took to be in the prayer room in the secret place want in your in the word of god to get that 30 45 minute word that you got to hear right. that you didn't see that mm-hmm. you only see the what's up here at, right. at the high point yes. you didn't get to see you didn't see the work the blood sweat and tears that goes into it so everybody was, you know, wants a word and a word and a word from this person or that person. You lay hands on, you got the traveling evangelist, the traveling prophet or apostle, pastor, teacher, whoever it is, laying hands on all these people are going up to the front, trying to get that word, trying to get some of that anointing, but right. they ain't going to get it. No. They're right. not going to get it. Because the word doesn't change your life if you do nothing about it. Right. Right. What he, I, I loved what he said. Um, a word from a prophet should push you towards the desert. Right. Not towards yep. destiny. Right. Because once you take that word and you receive it and you're like, yes, I claim that word. Well, guess what? Well, guess where you're going? Right. To the wilderness. Yeah. <laughs> and if you go before God pushes you there, it's going to be better. Yeah. And let's talk about it one more thing. Character. Yeah. Yes. This was a big thing this yes, morning. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yes, it was. Wilderness is character development where yes, we was. learn to depend on God. And God is not interested in your call. He is interested in your character. Right. Yep. There's a lot of character building that has to be done. In order for you to sustain the call, you have to have the character to help the call proceed. There's no way to do it otherwise. I don't care how powerful of a message 
you can bring on the platform. If you're living like sin the other six days of the week, your message is false. Right. Correct. You're and not playing. just if you're on the platform. I mean, the saints, they come into the church. It's easy to play a part for a couple of hours a week. But is that what's going to save anybody? Mm-hmm. Is that going to teach the person next to you their call and how to walk through the wilderness? It's not going to teach them nothing. Mm-hmm. The story of redemption in the Bible has always been twisted to make it feel very good and very pretty and very clean in the Western church. And that is a tradition that I've always hated because when you look at what it costs Jesus to get up on a cross and we want to try to tie ribbons and bows and put makeup on it and act like it wasn't painful and it didn't hurt and it didn't destroy the flesh. And we don't think that we're due for the same treatment. We have lied to ourselves and our preachers are going to hell for preaching a false gospel of a Christ that did not have to suffer the way he said he had to suffer. Well, somebody, one of them said this morning, Adam struggled because he was born a grown man and therefore lacked the process. Jesus was born a baby and went through a process. Yeah. (laughs) Scars, not stars. Right. So there's a process to life. There's a process to becoming who the Lord has created you to be. And that process includes wounds from people that you love and people that you don't love. Wounds make it real. Right. I think the wounds are what makes it powerful. Right. He says his power is made perfect in our weakness. Mm -hmm. How can you be, how can you have any power if you can't even admit that you are weak? Right. And Corey Russell said there's no more putting Band-Aids on gaping wounds. It's true. Yeah. Just be, be honest. they got to be cleaned and healed. He's got to do the work. But sometimes in order for that to happen, you got to go in the wilderness mm-hmm. for that to happen. Wilderness is really about submission. Yes. It's amazing. Will you yeah. submit? Will you submit and surrender and give everything mm-hmm. to Jesus? Because he's worth it. And yes, it's painful. And yes, it's hard. And yes, people are attacking you and accusing you and all of this. But will you submit to the process of healing, of character development, so that you can do everything that you were created to do? Yeah. Yeah. Man, again, I, she's... It's going to take me probably a good... I'd say about another week and a half to fully process all the stuff. I know. And the cool thing is, is all this stuff, y'all, it's available online. Yeah. You could go to um, Jeremiah Johnson's YouTube page right now. You can click on the sessions and you'll get every bit of the teaching that we sat under this weekend right in the comfort of your own home. But I challenge you that when you click on those links, make sure you are praying before you even click play. Because if you're not ready to hear the truth that we heard this weekend, the enemy will come and still kill and destroy it before it even takes root in your heart. And that's exactly what he wants to see happen. He wants to see the word that is manifested through these powerful speakers who have gone through the fire, yep. who have been purified. And will go through the fire again. Yep, and they will have another fresh round of amazing testimony. And we don't want to see that happen to you. No, no one around this table, Michael, Jamie, Kara, or myself, or any of the thousand of other people that were there this weekend, no one wants to see the word get squandered. No. So we encourage you go into the wilderness because it can produce fruit if you allow it. Remember what that guy said this morning? Uh, I think it was James, the latter end. He said, Jesus had 30 years of preparation, three and a half years of administration, and 2,000 years of intercession. Yeah. <laughs> Get to the wilderness. Because he is our intercessor. He goes daily before the throne. Yep. And that's what it says in Scripture. So that's... That's not improper Bible teaching, y'all. It's not. That's correct. (laughs) So what burdens you? What makes your heart burn? That's a good question for everybody. What makes What makes your heart burn? Hmm. 
I will be honest with everybody out there, and I think if anybody else wants to add in, I my heart burns for the traditions of men to stop being elevated above the Word of God, or for those traditions and the Word to be jumbled together as though they belong together. My other burden is for presence-driven worship, for people to understand what it truly is to live in the truth and the Spirit, because that is what we're supposed to do as worshipers. That's what burdens my heart. That's what I want to see in this region. That's what I want to see in Michigan. That's what I want to see in Indiana, in in the uh, Illinois area, in Ohio. I want to see it all over the country. But I know the charge that I have is very specific right now. And I know the other, others around the table are burdened with other things. But together, it's filtering into a very large, amazing call. Because it all fits. It's like a beautiful puzzle. It's incredible. It is. I still can't believe the Lord is having us do this. For us, we're like nobody special. <laughs> I mean, nobody special. What's your burden, Michael? All the people that think that they are inadequate or ill-equipped or um, just you know not framed for the job, or they've even been told that they don't have any, they don't have any place or space to do whatever it is that God's given them to do, and just to be able to enrich and empower them and let them know that none of us are well, the only qualification you need is to be called. Really, yeah. um, it doesn't matter what kind of a train wreck you were before you had your encounter once you've had it nothing ever looks the same to that yeah jamie what about you i am (laughs) i am burdened for those who are having a hard time laying down their flesh for crucifying the flesh because that is the hardest thing that we are called to do to lay down the things that that you know we think make us feel good the things that we think you know make us cool or whatever it is you know that is hard that is hard to do but god has so much better in store for us and and you can't grab on to what's next if you don't let go of what you've got and he calls us to that and you know that just burdens my heart i mean as the evangelist of course i'm burning for those lost souls but that is a huge part of the yeah. lost soul is that that you can't let go of who of of that flesh it's so it's sticky. Yeah, it's, it's on sticky. You. It's sticky flesh. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we, and, you know, the Lord is wow. here to wash it clean. Yeah. And we just got to yeah. let him do it. But aren't those people that <clears throat> won't surrender their flesh, aren't they a lost soul? They are. It goes hand in hand. And, you know, it's There's not, a lot of people sitting in church every Sunday that aren't saved. Exactly. It's not just out on the street. It's, it's not, not just the guy on the corner. It's not. That guy may be saved already. Right. And you're sitting in a church pew saying, he ain't saved. Oh. Right. And Come that's, on. And that's where the prophetic teaching comes across, where it's all it just bringing across the ways and character of God, continually yeah. bringing across the ways and character of God, that God wants more for us than that. Yeah. Amen. It's his heart that we'd be better tomorrow than we were yesterday. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Kara, what do you buy? What you got? Oh, my heart is burning for, ugh. You know, Shane's been talking about it, my husband, for weeks, like the message, the message, the message. It is the message. It all became so clear to me this week. The message that we have, the message that we're carrying, it really is to smash old wineskin platforms. And it's not going to be received by everybody. There's going to be a ton of pushback. But it is works. And it is what the Lord is breathing on today. And that is what my heart is burning for. Like, I am like... I, there is a message burning inside of me to bring what he is doing, what he is saying, how he wants his church to be run, to bring it to the region, then the state, then the nation, then the world. And I don't know how it's all going to work, but I know it's there. And I know it's he's dropped it in my spirit. And you know how I know it's going to work? How? Because you are the message. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I see. I know. Praise yeah. God. I just, I am very unqualified, but I know that that is. That's the truth, though. I know that that's correct. <laughs> yes. I don't know why. It's really God what we're called to be. Chose me, but it's true. We have yeah. to smash platforms and break down the walls of denomination. Yeah. But he qualifies us. 
Praise God. He qualifies us because, you know, in that wilderness season, we laid down our flesh. You laid down your flesh for many years to get the, to get to this I'm point. Still to get to this my flesh. We we still laying down my flesh. Every day. Every <laughs> day. Are. Every day. Uh, it ain't oh, coming. Praise God. I just know and my heart is also burdened for those people that are lukewarm, that they they walk yeah. every day and they think that yep. they're saved, but geez, they're going to meet Jesus one day and he's going to say he didn't know them. My heart is burdened for them. It makes me yeah. want to weep. Yeah. I agree with There's that. no more playing Christianity. There's no time for that. You're either on the train or you're off. Yeah. You can't be thinking about it. Yep. He is worthy and he is worth the sacrifice. He's worth the surrender. There is no doubt in my mind. Time is of the essence. You may not have 40 more years to make the decision to follow Jesus and surrender and lay down your life. You can't live in both worlds. Hmm. It is impossible, but the most peace and happiness you can ever have is following a sold out surrendered life to Jesus, period. Even though it's hard, even though it's painful, even though you'll face attack, even though people will think you're crazy and out of your mind, it is absolutely positively the best thing you could ever do. Yeah. And it's probably not going to look like what you think. And I know that there are people that literally would have walked away from the communion that we just took. Had it been served to them like that. Wow. Because it was a communion of water and pita chips. <laughs> That's what we had. We did the best we could with what we yep. had. But I know that there are people that would have looked at that. And because it didn't look like what they thought it should, they would walk away from the body and blood of Jesus himself. That reminds me of a point that Jeremiah said. He said legalism is a false grace. Mm. Bam. Bam. Shazam. Bam. Wow. We can't be legalistic. Nope. And here's another one. This was a gut punch for some people. Satan does not counterfeit trash. Right. He only goes after authentic things. He only goes after the good stuff. Yeah. Not the trash. That's right. The trash. (laughs) So if you are in a church that is not experiencing the power of God, if you are in a church and a fellowship that seems dry and country club, You have to ask yourself one very important question. Is the Lord there? Yeah, that's a reasonable question. Is the Lord there? I'm not, I'm not going to disparage any fellowship. I'm not going to sit here and cast stones at any, any church, any fellowship, whether in the area, here, anywhere across the nation. If you can't honestly say that the Lord is there and you don't even know what the Lord looks like because you've never seen his face, you've never spent time on your knees, you've never spent time doing what he's called you to do, I don't even know that you are even qualified to even tell me that the Lord is there or not. Colossians 2.8 was brought to bear. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. That's a good word. That's a one, two. Yeah. We aren't called to be politically correct. We're called to be Jesus correct. Yeah. <laughs> and some of what we say is difficult, and people don't want to hear That's it. That's true. <laughs> right. But it's the truth. If the Lord is not where you fellowship, then why are you there? Because if you want an encounter with Jesus, you're going to have to go after it. It isn't just going to show up magically. Right. And there are people right now all across the world that are teaching. I think there was a gentleman in Malta who was prophesying, teaching on the streets about the goodness of God. And he was arrested and thrown into jail. That stuff is happening the world over. Yet we have the most free options out of every single country in the world. And yet we are the most silent he is raising up voices in the wilderness to make a way and prepare the way for the Lord. Yeah. And that is what we're going to do. Yep. We're not going to be silent. Our message might provoke, but it will be the message of Christ. It That's will right. be the gospel right. that That's he has right. preached. Yep. It will be the love of Jesus, and it will have power mm-hmm. and authority yep. because of the cost that we are bearing right now in yep. this seat, in these seasons. Yep. 
to make sure it comes to pass. Mm -hmm. That's right. He has burdened us with this. Can't shake it. Truth isn't based on what makes us feel good. Nope. (laughs) And one moment in the presence of God changes your life forever. Wow. You don't have to like what the Bible says, but don't mean it ain't true. Right? Don't mean it's going to be easy either. We have to be loyal to, to him. Yep. We're going we're gonna to hit it hard in this next season. Yeah. And we're going to. We are. Um, we're going to come out guns a blazing with also some shields to deflect the bullets coming our way. Yeah. <laughs> we are pulling our heads up out of the ground and we are willing to accept the shots that come our way. Because we are not afraid of putting our lives on the line to see God glorified in Amen. this region. We want him famous in this right. region. We want people right. to know that they know that know that he is real, he is alive, and he is available. Yep. That's our burden. Yeah. That's our burden. What's that your burden? Person. That's the question we're asking you right, right now. What is your burden? What does your heart burn for? Get on your knees, get on your face, get before the Lord, and let it burn. Let it burn, baby. Anybody have anything else to add? God is good. All the time. (laughs) All the time. And all the time, God God is is good. good. Well, this is uh, a podcast from the road. I know it's a little rough sounding, but you know what? Who cares? And we are really hoping that you guys will take the time it's going to take you a few i understand it might take you a few weeks to go through all the videos but they're worth a watch you owe it to yourself you owe it to honestly your spirit man you owe it to the development of your character and your burden Mm -hmm. to listen to these messages to get a burden for something so there could be a yearning and a burning inside you for the passion of what he has called us to be, and that is ministers of his flame, ministers of his fire. And so we are going to challenge you guys to go out this week and watch those videos. Yeah. Um, if it takes a few weeks or a month or so, if you have to rewatch them, good. Take some notes. Don't let this stuff fall on deaf ears. Don't let it fall in a deaf way. Make sure you're putting forth a practice and a process to get these things into your life. It will be the best thing you can do. And guess what? The world is counting on men and women That's right. that are faithfully loving Jesus to go out and be the hands and feet of the kingdom of God here on That's earth. Right. Yeah. Until next week, we'll see you later. See ya. Bye. God is moving and desires to move in your life too. We know listening to this podcast is one of many ways he can work in your life. The Barn Church of Ministries exists to create environments where people encounter Christ and are empowered to advance the kingdom. Check us out on the web at thebarn.church. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at The Barn Ministries. Listen to this podcast on Amazon, Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Spreaker podcast platforms. A new podcast is posted every Friday. If you would like to reach us, send us an email to podcast at thebarn.church. Visit the Barn Church in St. Joseph, Michigan. Service times are Sundays at 1030 a.m. and 6 p.m.